Welcome Florida Conference to this very first worship convocation. This very first time, the very first initiative for us to all be together from Tallahassee all the way over to Jacksonville, from Perry to Homestead in the Keys, joining by Facebook, by Roku, by Instagram, by YouTube. You are welcome to worship today. Florida Conference has over 300 churches, companies, and mission groups, around 30 local church schools and academies, and several other entities. God is truly blessing us. For membership, we have over 65,000 members and continuing to grow daily. Also in this great conference, we have the privilege to be partners in ministry with Advent Health. There are many hospitals, Centric Cares, the healthcare workers, and the healthcare workers all over this state. We're so grateful that we can pray with them. And in fact, in a few minutes, Jay Perez is gonna to talk to us from Advent Health. He's vice president of mission and ministry. He'll be sharing a very special segment. And we have several components that we'd love to bring to you this morning as we worship the Lord, creative and new and wonderful things. But I wanna to introduce to you the treasurer of our Florida conference, Elisa Rauming. So glad that you're here. Thank you. And I want to introduce to you our conference executive secretary, Elder Tim Goff. It is a privilege and a pleasure to co-host this beautiful service with you. Absolutely. Together, we're the church of the Florida Conference. We're gathered in our homes. We're scattered all across this land. Who would have thought that alone together would have this new kind of meeting? There's a few announcements we'd like to bring to your attention. Since March, We've been having a Vespers service similar to this today, every Saturday evening at 6.30. We're gonna to continue to do that starting next week. And we just welcome you to continue to join us online for these very special times of worship and fellowship. During this worship convocation today, you're gonna to hear from members from numerous churches who have contributed to make this service beautiful and special. We only wish that there was more time for more churches and more testimony. Dr. Machado has prepared a message for us to live by and pray about, considering what it's gonna be like post COVID-19. We pray that God will speak to your heart and all of us together as a community preparing for the days ahead. The COVID-19 virus has had an impact upon our churches, our conference, the Southern Union, the North American Division, and the World Church. But we know that God is in control. We are never alone and His divine purposes will always be realized. As we see in Philippians 1.6, He will see to completion what He has begun in each of us and in His church. We can rely on Him. He is our God and we are His children. Again, welcome and stay tuned for a beautiful worship experience. Hello, welcome and happy Sabbath. We want to invite you to sing with us as we worship our incredible Creator. You'll find the lyrics below on your screen. Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are. Oh my God. 
On behalf of Advent Health, I would like to express a word of appreciation, support, and just say a word of thanks to all our caregivers, 
nurses, physicians, everyone who is involved right now in caring for patients across our conference and across our state. The work that our caregivers are doing day in and day out is a work of love, it's a work of grace, and it's also a work of sacrifice. And so we want to take a moment to say thank you and to express our appreciation, our respect, and our love to each one of you for the work that you are doing day in and day out on behalf of our community. God bless you and thank you again for the hearts and the work that you bring every single day to the workplace. Blessings. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, let us begin by saying thank you. Thank you for being a God of justice, a God of mercy, and a God of peace. I ask you to please be with our families wherever they may be. Give us the wisdom to do homeschooling, take care of our health, and just overall bless us, Lord, with a lot of patience and wisdom and compassion towards each other and then towards our patients, Lord. I pray for our patients when they need us the most. Embrace us with your true and abiding love so that our care and compassion for the sick will begin from you. We ask that you continue to give wisdom to our leaders as they make decisions to guide our organization. I ask for protection, a hedge of protection around each healthcare member, especially those in the front lines that risk their lives every day to care for others. May their compassion be never ending and may they be shielded from harm. May your peace fill our hearts so each patient will experience the healing ministry of Christ. And we praise your name, Lord. May you be glorified in this situation and may all things come to pass according to your will. We praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Florida Conference family. I'd like to introduce you to the Administrative Committee. Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ of the Florida Conference. We as an administration here are committed to complete the mission of God for the church. Thank you for partnering with us. We love you. We are praying for you. Stay safe in these difficult times. God bless. We would like to thank our pastors, our church leaders, and church members for all of your hard work during this time. Thank you for loving Jesus and for loving His church. Thank you to all of our pastors who have led our churches in a way that has exceeded expectations. You have done an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you to our administrators, teachers, school staff, and parents who work tirelessly to ensure success in education in Florida Conference. Your dedication is evident. Thank you to the members who stepped up in times of need, supporting the mission with your time, your resources, and with your understanding and patience in difficult decisions. God has done amazing and wonderful things through His church and for His church. He remains faithful and longs for us to continue to be faithful. We are pleased to be part of the Florida Conference and to serve God with people like you. May we continue to work for the Lord until the day comes when He takes us to our heavenly home.
Now we want to thank each of you for your faithfulness in Christian stewardship, in giving of your time and talents, serving God, serving your church, serving your communities. We just saw examples of food drives, community service events, and more. Thank you. And also in giving of your treasures, faithfully returning tithes and giving offerings. God sees and knows and is pleased. And as we serve you, as we steward the funds that you have returned to God, we can ensure that the work continues through our missionaries in the field, our pastors, our teachers, and more. In addition, for the past few years, we have also been intentional to direct over $1 million of your tithe dollars back into the local church through funds for evangelism. God is using your faithfulness to reach others for Him. Thank you. Thank you for continued faithfulness, especially during this COVID-19 season. We know that many of you are impacted one way or another, but even still, we have seen evidences of an abundance of faithfulness in that the giving of the tithe dollars is only down by 3.3% from last year. Thank you. We have also seen that the giving of local church offerings is down by a little bit more than that, almost 20%, yet we still thank you and we encourage you to continue giving to your local church, whether by Adventist giving or some other means. We thank you and we praise God for you. And as we thank you for your faithfulness, I just wanna remind you of God's faithfulness. We can't outbeat God in being faithful. And Lamentations 3 reminds us that His mercies and compassions are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Members and friends in Florida Conference, Seventh-day Adventists all over this land, God has given us the privilege to pray. Leading us in prayer this morning is Pastor Jeff Patterson from the Forest Lake Church. I invite you to wherever you are in your home. Some may want to remain where you're seated, and that's, that's beautiful. Some may want to stand because that's more convenient or easy for you, and some of you may want to kneel in prayer today. We want to invite you to go where you're comfortable, but let us worship the Lord together. Let us pray together. What a privilege it is for us to come together before the Lord in prayer. And what an unusual time and way to do this. But all of us together uh, around this conference as we join together today. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we are living the reality right now of the passage of Scripture that says man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his steps. None of us are living the life we expected to be living at this point. And it just makes the case so well, Lord, as, as this event has come upon us and leveled the field, suddenly we all know what it is to be a shut-in at church. Suddenly we all know that just the culture of gathering together cannot be the sum total of what the church experience is. But Lord, we need you to give us a vision in this time. That we will understand our place in this time. Lord, it's easy to be fearful. But your disciples, when they were in the boat that night when the storm was bad, you said to them, why are you afraid? You of little faith. Could it be, Lord, that our fear is more a function of our our little faith than it is a function of our environment because the storm was bad. They were in danger, but you said they didn't have to be afraid. Are you saying that to us? Lord, we want to hear your voice. We want to hear your voice like Joshua heard your voice when you said, be strong and very courageous. We don't know all the answers, Lord, but but maybe the fog that is around us is, 
it doesn't have to be for our destruction, but rather could be for our good because it enables us all the more to look at the vision You would give us. So Lord, I pray, give us vision that we will know where to go and that we will have courage for our journey during this time. Lord, forgive our sins. Attend to our weakness. Heal our diseases according to Your purpose. And may we be a bright light for You in this time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It is with a sense of pride and deep privilege that I seize this opportunity to publicly wish the vast constituency of the Florida Conference a blessed and rewarding Sabbath experience as we worship the great God of the universe. May I also commend the Florida Conference administration for the evidenced innovation and reimaginative energy that has gone into this first, this first time ever Florida Conference Virtual Sabbath Worship Convocation. In the presence of this globalized COVID-19 pandemic, I wish to affirm and appreciate you, the faithful members of the Florida Conference, for your demonstrated determination to continue praying, planning, giving, as well as carrying on the ministry of the church. This has been showcased through your active prayer ministry, creative pathfinder initiatives, youth and young adult Christian services rendered, as well as a frontline community services protocol, which has been responsible for scores of thousands of dollars extended through resources to local food banks. Your buildings might be closed, but the mission of Jesus is operative and wide open. Finally, allow me to affirm the meaningful, missional, large-heartedness and Christian professionalism of your illustrious leader, our president, Dr. Alan Machado. During this most difficult time for our world, our nation, and our church, Elder Machado has kept his unswerving eye on the ball. He has sustained his laser-like focus on responsible leadership in each significant dimension of church life. He calls the pastors, incessantly speaks with members, engages in boards and committees of our theological seminary, North American Division, Southern Union, and Florida Conference. Because of the spiritual call upon his life, he is determined to fulfill the ministry he has received in the Lord. President Alan Machado, may I leave a precious promise with you and your constituents extended to us by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 and verse 38 as well as 39. I am persuaded that death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature will be able to separate you, us, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I pray God's favor will be poured upon you, your administration, and your constituents. Also, I pray heaven's best for all who are tuned in for this wonderful Sabbath convocation for the Florida Conference. May God bless you.
The Air Florida Conference family, what a privilege it is for me to speak to you today in this uh, special occasion. Imagine more than 70,000 members uh, worshiping together with us. So thank you for being there. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your participation in this program. We have tried to give you our best. I want to thank um, uh, my friend, Elder Tim Golf, for helping us uh, put in this program together. I want to thank the pastors that called me, encouraging me to uh, uh, talk to you, to speak to you today, uh, again in this uh, special program, a uh, huge convocation. I don't believe we have done it before here in Florida Conference. And um, I believe that we should continue doing it in the future, hopefully without a pandemic, right? Uh, hopefully without having to be in concern about a virus. I want to thank the PR department, communication department, Gigi. Thank you for everything that you have done for us um, over the last weeks, uh, months already. And Eric uh, ben, uh, Benhard and uh, the whole team, thank you for that. And I also want to say thank you, Pastor uh, Jeff Patterson, for allowing us to uh, speak to the people of God from your church, from an empty church, empty pews. But I wanted, I wanted to speak to you from a church behind a pulpit. I wanted that symbolism there. Uh, because we are going to open the Word of God and we are going to ask the Lord to speak to us today. Pastor Patterson, thank you for having us here and for allowing us to speak to the people of God from this special church. Eleven weeks ago, the Florida Conference in consultation with church leaders and following, of course, the guidelines of CDC and local governmental agencies recommending closing the physical doors of our church with the purpose of keeping our members safe from the attack of an invisible virus, COVID-19. 11 weeks is about 77, 77 days, imagine that. And I have to confess to you that I had no idea we were going to remain closed for so long. I thought maybe a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks the maximum, but here we are seven weeks in. And yes, we're used to uh, interruptions here in Florida. Uh, the hurricanes, they interrupt our gatherings from time to time. And... Um, we are used to that, maybe a couple of weeks, three weeks, um, and, um, but nothing, nothing close to what we are experiencing today. Hurricane, hurricanes destroy infrastructure and, and people perish during the storm, but this virus has hit us where it hurts the most because it has isolated us with its unpredictable way of infecting people and its predatory behavior on the most vulnerable coronavirus has changed the way we live for good, especially the way we socialize as human, human beings. And it hurts. It hurts because it has taken away what we treasure most, relationships relationships, being able to hug, being able to touch one another, being able to have lunch together. It has taken away relationships. I knew the meaning of the word quarantine, at least in the context of isolating the sick to avoid contagion or contamination, but I don't remember having a clear understanding of what a pandemic meant. I mean, having 
The world shut down in the 21st century as a result of a flu, a virus, it never, never crossed my mind. And you learn. You learn. You start learning quickly. And you start, uh, you, you begin to, to draw conclusions. And you learn how unstable this world is. And you are reminded that plagues will play a part, as the Bible foretold, in the closing events of the history of this world. And you are reminded that the second coming of Jesus is nearer than what you think. You also learn how fragile we are. You learn about fears, shortcomings, needs. You learn how dependent we are to the structures of our society. You learn how vulnerable freedom can be. You learn how crumbly the economy can be. Unemployment has reached unprecedented levels. And you learn what happens to a family when they have to live in quarantine, when they have to live with each other 24-7. Interesting things are revealed when a family is forced to quarantine. You learn how unstable a family can be under a crisis like that. Oh, yes, this pandemic has exposed many things. But we have also learned how strong we are, how brave people can be when courage is required. Think about the doctors, the nurses, the, nurses, the first responders. Think about their commitment and sacrifice. We honor them today. Honor must be given to those that honor is due. They are the real heroes. They are those that have been in the front line all this time. We have always appreciated them, but now we realize how vital their call and commitment are to the well-being of our society. Think about the workers that fill the shelves in the supermarkets at night so that we can get food and supplies during the day. Think about the families that have cared for the sick. 1.5 million people got sick in our country. Think about the sacrificial love and resiliency that has emerged as a result of the crisis. I'm collecting stories. I'm preparing a folder with stories because, you know, people forget. And I want to be able to come back to these stories in the near future, in the future, and, uh, and remember these days. I have a picture here of a lady. She is 101 years old. And she's saying, I am 101, and I beat COVID-19. Is that beautiful? You see how strong we could be when we want to be? That's a beautiful story. I have another picture here. This man was connected to a ventilator for 44 days. And now he is in a wheelchair going back home. And the nurses and doctors are saying, Congratulations, George, you beat, you beat COVID-19. Look at this one here. This is Robert Bates. He was able to survive Pearl Harbor in 1941. And he's saying, I beat COVID. What can you do? I was able to beat COVID. What is your superpower? This is a survivor. He fought and fought. He was not willing to let go. I have another one here. I am 99 years old, and I crush COVID-19. <laughs> this one is beautiful. I am 99 years old, and I crushed COVID-19. What can you do? Um, this one here, this is one of my favorites. This person was 
uh, in hospital for 53 days, and he is um, being taken out of the hospital in a wheelchair, and he says, 50 days, and I am out of here. And then you have all the nurses and the doctors, and I'm, I'm, I suppose this is the, the, the nurse that he had all those days that he was hospitalized, and he is giving this person a high five. 53 days, and I'm out of here. And then I have, uh, I think this is my favorite. This is an old man uh, whose wife is in the hospital with uh, the virus, and, um, and this is the anniversary, the 67 years uh, anniversary. And he is saying, you see the big heart in there, he went from the outside of the window with um, uh, his daughters and, and, and also family, and he is showing this beautiful sign to his wife. I've loved you 67 years and still do. Happy anniversary. That's beautiful. And this is the last one that I want to show you today. This is an 80, 89 years, uh, years old person, and he is um, going back home, and he has this sign, not today, Covey, not today, not today. You're not going to do it to me. Today, those are the stories, and I'm, I'm collecting those beautiful stories because we have learned how vulnerable we are, but we have also learned how strong we are, how courageous we can be when it is necessary. Think about, again, think about the families that have care for the sick. Think about the family that have lost loved ones to this pandemic, the sacrificial love, how they have been able to survive these difficult times. Think about the church and how the church has adjusted to the times and has remained relevant. I believe that the church is fulfilling its mission today more than ever as we reach out to thousands of people every weekend online while we stream our programs. Think about the educators that had to transition from the classroom to online classes from one week to another. Yes, this pandemic has exposed many things. And he has taught us many things. We have learned important lessons like the church is not a building. That discussions like who participates on the platform or the music we sing or the clothes we wear or the order of the liturgy have become irrelevant. We have been able to learn that for too long, for too long, maybe, maybe, Maybe we have given peripheral topics the importance that they never had while we ignored or took for granted the solid platform on which the Christian church was founded. Love for each other, the centrality of the gospel, the promise of the second coming. Oh, Dear Church of God, we must take this opportunity to reset, to refocus, to grow spiritually. And we should not allow ourselves to continue being blinded by our own human understanding and traditions. For too long, for too long we have believed that we were rich, that we were clothed, that we were able to see. And the Bible is telling us that we have not realized that we have been poor, blind, and naked. We were proud of our traditions in the sense of concepts that could not and will not stand the test of time. 
And maybe we are conducting ourselves irresponsibly in regards to the mission that was entrusted to the church, to us. You see, it gets to the point where self-preservation is not preservation at all. When the mission is blurred by irrelevant discussions that produce needless behaviors, the mission becomes unrecognizable. When the movement is required to carry so much unnecessary weight in the form of self-righteousness and human tradition, the movement becomes a heavy burden. When we strangle ministry for reasons of gender, or when we avoid giving our youth responsibility and participation in our church because we believe that they don't have the experience and we don't know how to deal with a post-modern mentality, mind, the church suffers. When the gospel is presented in a way that loses charm because it is shared in a way that creates fears and a distorted image of God, then we are harming what Jesus accomplished in the cross of Calvary. As Paul says in Galatians 2.21, Christ died for nothing. We needed this pause. We needed this window of time. Maybe, I submit to you today, maybe we needed our buildings closed for some time. Maybe we needed our social church routines to be quarantined. I know that what I'm saying is hard, but times like this deserve our total transparency. And God has allowed it because this pandemic, and I believe this, this pandemic did not take God by surprise. So he has allowed the church to go through this because in my, in my mind, in my heart, I'm feeling that God is trying to tell us something. We needed this pause. We needed to quarantine our social church routines. So God will use these things that are happening in our world today not only to fulfill the signs and judgments that were prophesied by Jesus himself to judge the world, but God will also use this crisis to reorganize the faithful, to revive the mission, to reveal the truth, to reignite the church, to redefine the message, and to prepare the saints for the final act, the second coming of Jesus. So the question is, and this is the question that I have for you today, is the Adventist church in Florida ready to fulfill the mission that was entrusted to us? It's a simple question. To be or not to be? That is the question. Do we want to be? Are we ready to return to our congregations with a renewed spirit, a laser-focused mission? Are we ready to return to our congregations with the intention that nothing is more important than to finish the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are we ready to reopen the doors of our facilities with a renewed mind and a transformed heart? Here is a charge that I have for you today. Theologians call it the manifesto of Jesus Christ the manifesto of the Christian church, the reason for our existence as the Seventh-day Adventist church, the reset button that I'm talking about, the reason for going back to our gatherings with a renewed spirit, you will find the manifesto, the statement in Luke 4, 16 through 19. There, 
you find Jesus that went back to the town, Nazareth, where he was brought up. And the Bible says that on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, and here is the manifesto of Jesus Christ, and this is the manifesto of the Christian church. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, Jesus said, reading from the prophet Isaiah, because he has anointed me. And here is the charge to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Let this be our manifesto too. Let this be the manifesto of God's church in Florida. Let us go back to the centrality of the gospel. Let us recommit ourselves to making Jesus the center of our lives and message. Let us ask the Lord to reveal His Son to us. Let us love Jesus like never before. Lift up Jesus, you that teach the people. Lift Him up in sermon, in song, in prayer. Let all your powers be redirected to pointing souls, confused, lost, to the Lamb of God. Lift Him up, the risen Savior, and say to all who hear, come to Him who hath loved us and hath given himself for us. Let the science of salvation be the burden of every sermon, every Bible study. Let the science of salvation be the center of everything we preach and teach. In our churches, in our schools, everywhere, bring nothing into, the, into your preaching Bring nothing into your preaching to supplement Christ. The wisdom and power of God hold forth the word of life, presenting Jesus as the hope of the penitent and the stronghold of every believer. Reveal the way of peace to the troubled and the hopeless and show forth the grace and completeness of the Savior in your life. Ellen G. White wrote in letter 86, These are our themes. Christ crucified for our sins. Christ risen from the dead. Christ our intercessor before God. Christ coming again and closely connected to this is the office work of the Holy Spirit, the representative of Christ sent forth with divine power and gifts for men. And then she adds, the sacrifice of Christ as an atonement for sin is the great truth, is the great truth, is the great truth around which all other truth cluster. Everything we preach, everything we teach, our doctrines, everything has to be presented through the cross of Calvary in order to be rightly understood and appreciated every truth in the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation must be studied in the light that streams from the cross of Calvary. I present before you, she said, the great grand monument of mercy and regeneration, salvation and redemption, the Son of God uplifted on a cross. This should be the foundation of every sermon, every discourse, every Bible study, everything we say, everything we teach. This should be the foundation of everything we do. In our churches, in our homes, in our schools, 
in our hospitals, in our lives. Let this be our manifesto. Christ uplifted as the only solution to this world. Number two, let this also be part of our manifesto. The church of God in Florida will be known. We need to be known as the people of the book. As the people of the book. Did you know that the Adventist church was known to the world as the people of the book for many years at the beginning of our movement? Did you know that our founders, our pioneers, they wanted our church to be founded on the principles of the Reformation? Do you believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church preaches sola fide, sola gratia, sola scriptura, solus Christus, soli deo gloria? This means by grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone, scripture alone, glory of God alone. That is the foundation of the message that we proclaim to the Lord, that we proclaim to the world. In councils and writers, Ellen G. White is saying, at the time of the end, don't miss one word, please. At the time of the end, God will have a people upon the earth to maintain the Bible and the Bible only as the standard for all doctrines and the basis of all reforms. When God's people are at ease and satisfied with their present enlightenment, we may be sure that God will not favor them. It is his will that we should be ever moving forward to receive the increased and ever increasing light which is shining for them. There will be, in a letter to P. T. Megan in 1903, almost at the end of her ministry, she wrote, there will be a development of the understanding, for the truth is capable of constant expansion. She is saying that the church of God should not be frozen in time. She is saying that the interpretation of the truth and doctrines that should drive decision-making process in the church should not be frozen in time. She is saying that the church should move forward, understanding the times and the seasons. She is saying they, there will be a development of the understanding, for the truth is capable of constant expansion. And she wrote this in 1903, again at the end of her ministry. She is saying our exploration of truth is yet incomplete. Yet sometimes I believe that we tried very hard to live in the 19th century, and we make decisions that don't reflect this recommendation. We have gathered up only a few rays of light. Let me read it again. There will be a development of the understanding for the truth is capable of constant expansion. Our exploration of truth is yet incomplete. We have gathered up only a few rays of light. Once again, we are reminded that the present attitude of the church is not pleasing to God. There has come in a self-confidence that has led us to believe that there's no need for more truth and greater light. 
as we move forward trying to fulfill the mission of God. We are living at a time when Satan is at work on the right hand and on the left, before and behind us, and yet as people we are asleep. So here is my charge to you. Here is what I call part of our manifesto as we reopen our churches, as we open our doors for our gatherings again. Let us, let us go back to our gatherings, to our churches with a renewed spirit, with a heart ready to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to go back to the Bible. The truth is capable of constant expansion. God will reveal greater light for His Word is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We will manifest His purpose to every generation. God, God will manifest His purpose to every generation as we commit ourselves to drink from the living waters of the everlasting Word of God. The people of God will never be in darkness. The truth will always shine upon those who seek the continuing light emerging from the Word of God. This Word will become pertinent, relevant to our needs today. The Word of God will answer our questions. We are looking for answers in the wrong place. My plea to you today as we go back to our churches, as we reopen our doors, let us go back to being the people of the book. Let us go back to being the people that found the foundation of everything that we believe and every truth that we proclaim on the Word of God. His Word will be pertinent, relevant. That's the promise for our needs today. His message will continue to conquer the most unreasonable hearts of this postmodern era. His Word will transform the church of today the same way it has transformed the church of all times. Let us make Jesus the center of our life, faith, our message. Let us go back to the Bible. The Lord wants to reveal more truth. The Lord is willing, is eager to give us direction, purpose, to answer the questions, those questions that have us struggling today. And let us, this be also our manifesto. Number three, and final point that I want to share with you. We need to go back to the mission that made us people. We need to go back to the mission that made us people. Peter says it this way, but you are a chosen people, royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you will declare, here is the, here is the mission for God's church, that you may declare the praises of him, him is Jesus, Jesus, who called you out of the darkness, out of darkness into the wonderful light. Once you were not a people. 160 years ago, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was not a people. But now we are the people of God. You are now the people of God. Once you had not received mercy. But now, now, the Lord wants to give us Grace, mercy, forgiveness, reconciliation, purpose, direction, mission. We were not, we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. As we prepare to reopen the doors of our churches and start gatherings again, let us recommit to the mission that God gave this church. 
160 years ago, we were not a people. Today, the Adventist church is, has presence in every corner of the world. God has made us his special possession because he gave us a specific mission and a specific message to be proclaimed as it was revealed by the first angel in Revelation 14. The mission, go to the world, to every nation, tribe, and language, and people, the message, and proclaim, proclaim, proclaim the eternal gospel, good news of salvation. Proclaim the eternal gospel. Fear God and give Him glory because the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. The hour has come, dear church. Dear church, hear my heart. The hour has come for the people of God to proclaim that God has opened the books and authority and glory and sovereign power and dominion was given to the Lamb. And the things we are experiencing, experiencing today are nothing but signs that point to the fulfillment of Jesus' promise. And this is true. This is the true spirit of Adventism. If you say that you are part of God's church, part of the Adventist church, then you wake up every day looking up, saying, Is it today, Lord? Is it today? Is it today? Are you coming back today? Today, today, and always. Today, that was the answer of William Miller when he was asked to give another date. He said, today, today, and always today. That is the spirit of Adventism. That is the right spirit, the true spirit of Adventism. We live to see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. That is our identity. That is who we are. And that is our mission to be proclaimed to the world. Jesus is coming again. Yes. The Lord requires something from us. He made us people from a handful of visionary youth. He made them go through a great disappointment. He confronted them with unimaginable challenges. He sent them to conquer the world with nothing but His Word. And as a patient father, God molded us, molded us until we became His church. He made us His special possession because He gave us a pertinent, urgent message a message that is only proclaimed by this church because our emphasis is there. Jesus is coming again. That is the true spirit of Adventism. If you are a Seventh-day Adventist, this is what you believe. Jesus is coming again. And God gave us a crucial mission. Go proclaim it to the world. When we look at, the, at our 160 years of existence, when we meditate on the ways the Lord has been with us over the years, we have to say it with confidence, there is nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be afraid of. Pandemic, not today. Not today. We're going to crush COVID-19. The church is called to shine in a world like this, in a world that is falling apart, in a world of crisis. We are here to shine for Jesus. There is nothing to be afraid of. If you know, if I know who we are, who we are, and that is, if Jesus is the grand monument of mercy and regeneration, salvation and redemption, 
the Son of God uplifted in every aspect of your life. If the Word of God is a source of all truth and doctrine, and if the mission is clear in our minds, there is nothing to be afraid of. Nothing. So as we go back in the future, in the near future, because we still don't know when we're going to open our churches, but we know that we're going to go back and we're going to open the doors of our buildings and we're going to resume our gatherings. And, and dear church, let us not pretend that nothing happened. Let us go back with a renewed spirit. Let us go back to our churches with our mission clear in our minds, with Jesus living in our hearts with the Word of God, the Scripture, guiding every decision that we make. The principles are here. I want to conclude with a story that I read a long time ago, but I like it. It goes well with the sermon. Florence Chakwil. Florence Chadwick was the first woman to swim across the English Channel in both directions. On the morning of July 4th, 1952, she was 34 years old. She attempted to swim the 26 miles between Catalina Island, Catalina Island, and the California coastline, 26 miles. As she began, she was flanked by small uh, boats that watched for sharks and were prepared to help her if she got hurt or grew tired. About 15 hours into the experience swimming, a thick fog set in. Florence began to doubt her ability, and she told her mother, who was in one of the boats, that she didn't think she could make it. She swam for another hour before asking to be pulled out, unable to see the coastline due to the fog. As she sat in the boat, she found out that she had stopped swimming just one mile, one mile away from her destination. A few hours later, while warming her body with a blanket, Florence said to a reporter, look, I don't want to make excuses, but if I had seen the coastline, if I had seen the coastline, I would have made it. I would have never given up. It wasn't the fatigue, nor the charts, neither the cold water that defeated her. It was the fog. She could not see. Two months later, Chatwick tried again, this time was different. The same thick fog set in, but she made it. This time she made it because she said that she kept a mental image of the shoreline in her mind while she swam. She kept, she kept a mental image of the coastline in her mind as she swam. Now I may be speaking to someone today that has been touched by the Holy Spirit and wants to say more than reopening the doors of our church, or church building, what I really need is to reopen the doors of my heart to the one that is knocking outside. Jesus is asking you, let me in, open the door. 
Dear church, please, don't go back to church pretending that nothing happened. The Lord has given us this time because He wants us to reflect. He wants us to reconsider our spiritual journey. He wants us to recommit to Jesus. He wants the Word and the mission of God to be revealed in us because it was assigned to us to proclaim the second coming of Jesus. Go back to the book. May Jesus, the center of your life and message, and devote your time, resources, gifts, and energy to the mission that was given to the church, and the fog will vanish. Keep that mental image of the heavenly city in your mind, and keep moving forward. God wants to reveal more truth to the church. God wants to do great things with His church, but we need to be able to keep our mission, our purpose, and that beautiful picture of the heavenly city in our minds. Yes, it is true. There are many challenges. Yes, it is true. We're living through a pandemic, something that none of us have gone through, and maybe the very old amongst us, they remember where there were children, maybe, back in 1917, 1918, when the world suffered the Spanish flu pandemic. But this is something new to us. And yes, I recognize that there are many challenges. Yes, the work is big. Yes, we have many limitations. Yes, there are days when the shoreline looks far away. But remember, remember, we may be but one mile, one mile away from our destination. Let us keep that mental image of our heavenly home and the church will be victorious. And I leave you with this charge from Ellen Chief White. In her well-known writing, God's hand is upon the wheel. She says, fearful perils are before those who bear responsibilities and work in the cause of God. Perils the thought of which make me tremble. But the word comes. God is saying, my hand is upon the wheel, and I will not allow men to control my work for these last days. Amen for that. I'm so happy that it's God's hand on the wheel. It is not mine. It's not yours. It is God's hand. My hand is turning the wheel, God says, and my providence will continue to work out the divine plans regardless of human inventions in the great closing work. We shall meet with perplexities that we do not know how to deal with. We do not know how to deal with, but let us not forget that the three powers of heaven, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are working that a divine hand is on the wheel and that God will bring His purposes to pass. Therefore, therefore, I read, I read to you, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have, uh, you have need of endurance, yes, of course, yes. You have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, 
my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back for perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Dear church, let us persevere. Let us bring Jesus to take control of our hearts, of our lives. Let us go back to the book, to the scripture. Let us concentrate on the mission that the Lord has given to the church and the fog will vanish. Let us go back to our gatherings. Let us reopen our churches with that new, renewed mind and heart. Let us surrender to the Lord. Let us love Jesus more than ever because his second coming is near. God bless your church. I love you. Please meditate, reflect on my charge to you today. Think about the manifesto of Jesus Christ and how that could be become real in your life. And let us recommit ourselves to the Lord. We're not going to go back to do the same. We're going to go back to fulfill the mission that made us the people of God. Dear Father, give us the strength. Give us your love. Give us purpose. Give us clarity of mind. Keep that mental picture of the second coming of Jesus in our minds so that we persevere in the call that you have made to your church and in the purpose that you have given to your church and in the message that you have given to your church and in the mission that you have given to all of us because we know, Lord, that your second coming might be but one mile away. We might be but one mile away from our destination. Bless your church. Protect your church. Bless your people. Keep them safe and healthy. Give us your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 34, 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. On behalf of the Florida Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, we would like to thank you, our church family, for worshiping with us today on our very first virtual convocation. Even though we cannot gather, touch, or hug, worship still pulls us together and brings us to the feet of Jesus. Worship frees us to let go and let God. Worship allows us to celebrate who God is in our lives. Even though this pandemic has changed the world as we know it, our God remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. In this opportunity given to us, let us rededicate our lives to Him and make Jesus the center of it all. We are here, alive, today, for such a time as this, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. As we usher in the final curtain of Earth's history, what a privilege it is to minister together as one body, one spirit, and one family. Let us join hands and continue walking together as we look toward the soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Until we meet again, may God bless.